Welcome to the Metabolic Classroom. One of the reasons I am frustrated by the modern nutrition obsession with carbohydrates is that there are so many little harmful molecules inherent to these carbohydrates that never get any attention. One of the most relevant, and I hope that after this you're going to consider them somewhat infamous, are lectins. Lectins are one of the more prevalent and problematic, and they have become a significant topic in nutritional science. These little proteins are found in many common carbohydrates, and as you're going to learn, they affect processes like gut function, including permeability, insulin signaling, and inflammation. So for those seeking to optimize their health, understanding lectins is essential. Modern diets, often rich in things like legumes, grains, and other processed carbohydrates, can expose us to lectins in ways that impact susceptible individuals in particular. Now, the research that we're going to review is going to highlight the effects on permeability and metabolic consequences, all of which really has an impact on our cardiometabolic risk factors and diseases. So the discussion, the mini lecture, uh, we're going to explore the cellular mechanism uh, behind lectins and their effects on health. And we're going to review a bunch of studies in the process covering a bunch of models from cells to rodents to humans. So as we get started, let's understand lectins. Lectins are proteins, as I said, that bind specifically to carbohydrates, such as sugars or polysaccharides, on the surfaces of various cells. Now, they're prevalent in plant foods, which means carbohydrates, most especially legumes like beans or lentils or peanuts, grains like uh, wheat, rice, and barley, and also nightshades, which are tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants, and similar. But they're also found in things like nuts and seeds. Now, in plants, lectins function as a defense mechanism, deterring consumption by other animals or insects by binding to their gastrointestinal lining, causing some gut irritation, and even potentially contributing to a level of toxicity in the body of whoever is eating it. This is reflective of something I've said before, which is that all things that are living want to stay alive. So by chemical or by claw, something is going to attempt to defend itself. And lectins represent one of the chemical defenders that plants will use. Now, certain lectins, such as phytohemagglutinin in kidney beans or wheat germ agglutinin in whole wheat, and even another one in jack beans called cancavalin A, will vary in structure. And there are others, many others that I haven't even mentioned, but they have a variety of, very, uh, of structure and their specificity in what they're binding. But what they have in common will be their interactions in myriad cellular processes that we're going to go through. Now, in our wisdom, we humans have learned that we eat plants and they hurt us. And so it's no surprise that we have developed methods in order to reduce them. So cooking methods like boiling, pressure cooking, fermenting will significantly reduce lectin content. And in fact, one of the citations for you insiders to access and read is a 2004 study in Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry, which demonstrated that pressure cooking can decrease lectin levels in legumes by up to 95%. You can't get rid of them entirely, but these residual lectins will persist and their ability to have some of the effects that we're going to elaborate are real. And the degree to which various people may experience some response to them is really individual and so those who are more susceptible to these kinds of things are the ones who, of course, need to be the most careful. But they're going to be the ones who not only feel the gut problems, maybe feel the cardiometabolic problems as well. All of which is just further evidence that perhaps in our revision of nutrition that happened over the past 60 years or so, Perhaps we got it wrong when we vilified fat and we inadvertently embraced what is turning out to actually be the villain.